Good evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you're watching from, and welcome to the stream. And today, in this stream, I am going to be building a go-kart. And I'm going to do some scripting as well. So, I'm going to not waste any time and get started. Uh, no viewers right now, according to YouTube, which is a shame, but maybe that will change in a moment as the stream has just started. And so, I've just changed my camera setting so I can maneuver the camera correctly or more conveniently so I am going to start off here by inserting a, a vehicle seat right here I'm going to give it a uh, I'm going to add a motor to the front this is just cosmetic this is for me to see um, um, which side the which side of the seat the front side is uh, because obviously that's the direction you want the cart to go. So I'm first going to quickly, I'm going to make a very, uh, pretty sloppy chassis to start off, but uh, I'll make it better later. So let's see, uh, the ca cart is pretty short. I think I'm going to keep Quite simple the cart itself. Uh, may flesh it out later, make it look a bit cooler. Let me think. Uh, I think I'll do this, make it a little bit. Uh, cart isn't that wide. So I'll do something like this. As YouTube is starting to screw me over, uh, I hope the stream is going to go last time. The last few times I've been streaming, the stream has been uh, a little bit all over the place. Sometimes it's been working quite well. I'm going to turn the music down a bit. I'm going to turn the um, desktop audio for BS a bit up so I can hear myself talk better and so you can still hear the music as well. So, uh, I've got this here, which is supposed to look like, uh, see, I need to check what's the front again, but that's the front, okay, uh, so this excuse for a, um, cart that I got here so far, so I am going to, uh, let me look up a picture of an actual go-kart, because I'm going to try right now to make it somewhat look uh, like a go-kart okay so I've got my uh, so I've got some images that I can use as a reference let's see so the cart doesn't have two axles going front so I'm going to keep it simple do this Oh yes, see, going to the same here. Make black. I think I'm going to extend the seat just a little bit. So there we go. Hope it's going to um, look somewhat like a cart later on when I'm done with this. So I'm going to make this a bit. Bit smaller, I think. Uh, speed of the cart isn't actually uh, that high, so I'm going to do something like that. And also, by the way, uh, if I I use my second screen to one look at the chat and two to uh, look at an image of a go kart as a reference, but so fortunately I'm going to be a bit slow when reading the chat at times as I'm trying to create a card based off an image kind of or take some inspiration from a from a Google image. Right, so I've got 
this, this is uh, good. I don't want to make, uh, I don't have to make a fence fancy for this stream. Then want to make base for where the steering wheel could be or um, yeah, the front of the cart that goes down like so I guess something like this then make a front bumper and there will be room here to add a couple of wheels which we'll get to later then the rear of the cart uh, let me get that image again let's see the wheels the rear of the cart wheels go so I'm going to shorten this bumper so I have room for the wheels and the rear wheels will take up this place here and I'm going to make this rear uh, just a little the bumpers a little bit prettier by adding a few wedges This is my first, uh, this is just me quickly making a go-kart. By the way, I can do better, but I'll have to take more time uh, if I want to do better. And uh, I'm not going to take my time, I'm just going to rush through this, kind of, more or less. Bumper on, make at least cover this part. Replicate a wedge with Ctrl plus D, Ctrl plus C again to duplicate this wedge and then put it on this side as well. I think uh, I'm going to do this and we're going to make this a little bit narrower both sides so uh, yeah this is good so And then maybe make the seat a bit more, make a bit more room to, from the rear to the front of the cart. So there's a bit more room for the front wheels. Uh, let's do this. That's good. Okay, now it's time to make the wheels of the thing. Uh, the seat itself has some properties of its own. We're not going to use these things here, so I can put them all to zero. I'm going to... Uh, let's keep on heads up display for now, the default Robux one. Uh, we may make our custom one in this livestream, depending on how it goes. But I'm going to start off simple, and I'm going to keep... Uh, the heads up display, the default uh, display on for now. Okay, time to make the wheels this thing. So I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to make it a cylinder. All right. Try to make a wheel. Uh, I haven't made, I, I can't remember what I did last time when I made a, when I tried to make a car with uh, suspension because I'm planning on using suspension and such, which is not what the Formula Robux cars use. I know for the Formula Robux cars I use the, I uh, use balls instead of uh, wheels or cylinders rather. But for these things, I'm going to, uh, for these wheels, I'm going to try cylinders, see how that works out. I think the wheels are a bit wider than the body of the car itself. I think the car is a bit too narrow compared to what a real car would uh, roughly look like. I think this looks fine as a go-kart. Nice, neat and simple. 
then I am already going to add the axle for the wheels and I think for my convenience later on I'm going to split the axle into two parts uh, let's see what's the size okay, let me get seem to UTL so it's a bit easier for me to uh, resize this thing without messing up. Okay, so this is going to be pretty small. I am going to spin half, so it's currently 3.2, which means I have to make its length uh, 1.6. But duplicate it. Uh, more exact movement. I'm going to name these parts as well, so. We are going to have front right or axle front right. This one's going to be called ax axle front left. Then we've got the rear axle, so we first have axle rear left and we have got axle rear right there we go so uh, I think this looks a bit weird um, let's see how it does it look on actual go car it goes gets really close to the front of the car so, uh, um, I think I'm going to keep it as it is for now. I may uh, make this look a little bit better later on. Alrighty, so we've got front left, front right, rear right. Rear left. That's our four wheels of our beautiful cart. And now we're going to get into a little bit of juicy stuff. And that I mean, I'm going to try at least because I haven't done this in quite a while to uh, add um, suspension and servos to make the wheels spin. So I'm going to move the axles and the wheels upwards quite a bit. And I am going to start off by adding a hing. Or let's see, uh, do we pronounce it hing by the way or hinge? I'm going to pronounce this hing, I'm sorry if it's wrong. I hope that this thing isn't centered. Uh, come on. So I want to add a hing to the middle of the car. I'm going to check if this is the... Okay, this is the middle. Good. Uh, I deselected it. So let me undo this quickly. Do it again. So I am going to... You know what? Uh, <laughs> let me start with... Let me have the hing go from the axle to the wheel. And then do the same for the other three wheels. There we go. Then I can put the wheels back here. Oh wait, I am being a little bit idiotic right here. Uh, this is not going to work because I need to be able to turn the wheels as well. So change of plan. Change of plan. So. These things, so these so-called axles, can go back. They are not going to be the actual axles of the wheel. They're going to be the visual axles, in a way. So I'm going to change the name to Part Back. And they can go back down here. 
see one more. No, that's where they were beforehand. Okay, so apparently it's pronounced hinge. Thank you. So, okay, now let's make the axles. And those have to be invisible parts. I'm sorry that uh, if I come over as pretty sloppy or if this video, this stream is pretty messy because I've pretty much done zero preparation. I'm doing this for fun. So I'm going to duplicate this part. I want to scale it. 0.8. I want the part to be a cube and I want it to be the same. Uh, width as the wheel and I want to make the block and I want to make it transparent so I'm going to call this axle mm, yeah this will be called axle it's fine okay. I want to okay it's Place these axles to their respective uh, wheels. So I'm going to do this, and what I'm going to do is axles for convenience right now. I'm going to move them up a few studs, or I can also move the wheels a little bit down. So the axle and wheels are temporarily separated. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to create a hinge that connects this, connects the axle with the wheel. So what's going to happen, I'm going to anchor everything, uh, I've made a few things that will connect the wheel with its respective uh, axle part. And what's probably going to happen if I click play here, is that the wheel, once I unanchor the wheels, they are going to be connected to the axles. See, there. And now I am going to, uh, I've seen someone do this by the way, um, actually no, because what I've seen someone do is may also add axles to the other side of the wheels, and I guess that's for stability of the wheels, that will make the wheels uh, more stable in general, they're not going to wiggle as much. Yeah, I'm going to do that because, that it makes sense, because... I've seen it for tank people doing it for tank chassis as well back in the day. Because back in the day I used to run a league called Open Hangout Racing and everyone were making their own uh, tank chassis. Of course I have to unpanker these wheels, so let me test if I did everything correctly. Okay, let's select the four axles. They all should have this one has three uh, attachments for some reason. Uh, which attachment should I remove? Let's remove this one. I think that's not going to mess anything up. Oh wait, I'm in play mode, so that won't work. Going to move one attachment here. I need this axle, and I'm going to remove one attachment that's on this side as well. And I hope that I remove the correct ones, and that they uh, won't do anything. Uh, or I mean. Um, yeah, it's just messy to have multiple attachments. It shouldn't matter, but I just like everything to be as uh, clean as possible. That makes sense. Okay, so I've got two hinks for every uh, 
Axel. What I'm going to do now is I am going to select all the inner hinge hinges. Not that one. Oh, this one isn't working. It's going over right now. So let me do a what we call a magic trick. I have to know how those axles work. Uh, they all are attached to uh, attachments and I can select these attachments. Now I need to find the wheel. I need to this attachment need to connect the axle, the hinge constraint to um, what's the first second? Yes, there we go. Good. Uh, question from, I'm sorry, can't read your name, it's in, it's in Greek, so I can't read that. Uh, well, I think, I think, uh, I should probably know you, uh, let me, uh, could you tell me your Roblox name? Uh, probably know you, I'm sorry. Uh, what's it going to be used for? Uh, I don't have plans yet. Whether it's going to be used for, I'm, for right now I'm just going to do this for fun. Yes. Okay. Hi. So I don't have plans where this is going to be used for. I'm just making this for fun right now and to uh, make a fun video. I'm just making this video for fun, basically, and to show uh, people because I think people want me to build a car and also make script a car. I think this is what those people want me to. Do and I thought, yeah, it's going to uh, do this live stream. Okay, so ah, uh, where was I? I was a little bit distracted. Oh yes, so uh, we've got the. I uh, am supposed to select the inner axles right now. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to rename them to motor constraint. Now I'm just going to call it motor, that's fine. I am going to uh, change the actuator type. So the actuator type, uh, if you want more information on this, I recommend going to the Roblox, looking up the Roblox documentation from this. I haven't checked the Roblox documentation for this this is just what I know so the actuator type is there's three options for this uh, so none is default so um, the which means the hinge won't won't make uh, the wheel rotate from itself it's going to roll when you put it on the hill and to make it roll downwards if you make it servo, you can make the wheel manually rotate. Um, you can rotate them certain degrees, and that's going to be useful in a moment when I'm going to make um, the wheels, the front wheels, move left and right. So we're going to use the servo later on. Uh, what we want now is the motor, and yes, this means this car will be four-wheel drive, the motor is going to make the wheels roll. And also I'm going to make these parts not collidable because then they can be without with inside the the wheels themselves without any further interaction. Which will be very useful. Then I need to insert a couple more parts then for the front wheels. I want to add in another invisible part or transparent part for now, for the time being. And so what I'm going to do with these parts is I am going to make... I'm actually going to make them for all four wheels for uh, a little bit of consistency because these parts are going to be attached they're going to be fixed with the rest of the cart, if that makes sense. They're going to be welded to the cart. Also going to uh, try to write a um, weld script later on if I remember 
how to do that because I love certain technique which uh, I'm not really acquainted to yet. So these things, I'm going to call them uh, servo. I think, actually, let's na give them more specific names for. Uh, so this one, because we're going to have to refer to them later on when we start scripting. Axel, I'm going to call this one Axel FR, Axel, uh, Axel FL, F Axel FR, Axel um, rear right, and Axel rear left. And we're going to same for these. RL and F uh, FL, not FR, FL, we've already got FR over here. I'm going to separate these just a little bit, like so. And I am going to uh, create more hinges. I'm going to again do them for both sides. So the idea is this part is going, as I said, is going to be welded to uh, the blue parts are going to be welded to the cart itself and to the vehicle seat, and the red parts are going to be, and the wheels are going to be fixed to the red parts, and the wet and the red parts will be rotatable by these hinges, which are which will be servos in a moment. Makes sense. So the red parts are going to rotate, which is going to make the wheels rotate as well. And the uh, blue parts are going to be fixed to the vehicle seat. They will always have the same position relative to the vehicle seat that I create to... Yes, I did. I need to at bottom. It's here, did I get more? Okay, so there we go. I think I c I c if I would unanchor these things and keep only these four anchored, then what should happen if I hit play is they're all going to the wheels and the red parts are going to be combined into one. There we go. Okay, so that's really cool. I'm going to make um, the tire itself transparent just for testing for later on. So we have already got the motors and now I am going to make sure that uh, the red parts can be rotated as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, I need to re make sure to rename uh, those four hinges as well. The bot I'm going to take the bottom hinge in this case. I don't think it matters if, if I either take the bottom of the, or the top one. This in this case I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm going to limit the movement of this things to a uh, lower angle minus 20 upper angle 20 and I'm going to rename this to servo attachments and I want to make actually limit the rear attachments to zero so they can't rotate themselves so the rear uh, so the rear wheels are going to be able to turn as well. We don't want that. So now I am going to move, combine the blue parts 
with I'm going to move them back to where they originally were which is here make sure they match the positioning of the axles here then I am going to uh, keep those red parts here they don't actually have to be uh... yes this will do because again if I hit play then we should get this good I am going to uh, make these axles non collide but I'm going to have to make a number of parts non collidable later on. Uh, I think this is all I'm going to have to make uncollidable. Uh, I'm going to click play. I'm going to see how my character is going to sit in this cart. I don't really care how. Uh, and yeah, the card is still anchored. Um, this looks, uh, this looks fine for now. So now we're going to start scripting. So I'm going to group all of this. I'm going to call this uh, my cart. And I am further going to uh, group this into uh, the chassis, so which is going to include the vehicle seat. So the chassis is going to include these parts. And by the way, how I, I'm, I can select multiple parts at once by holding control. I'll show you again very quickly. So I first click on this on vehicle seat. Then I click on this part, then I hold control, Whoop. I hold control, and I hold shift as well, and then I click on this part, then again I hold control, and now I press control shift, and I select these as well. So I'm going to group these, and I'm going to call them chassis, and the rest are going to be grouped into wheels all right I see activity in the chat but according to YouTube no one's watching so I don't know what's up with that that's a bit uh, silly also if you have anything any questions any topics you want to talk about with me uh, yeah just say it in the chat and now let's get going with the scripting so I am going to insert script into the vehicle seat going to zoom in so you guys can read what I'm writing if you're watching from mobile then you should still be able to make out what I'm writing let's make it like this so if you're watching this from mobile um, Simon Roman is asking what's this card for or I don't know I don't have plans yet. Maybe I'm going to use it for uh, future projects, but I don't know right now. I don't have plans at the moment uh, because for now I'm going to be focused on working on Formula Roblox for the time being. And maybe in the future I'm going to start working on something else. But I don't know what yet. Uh, so maybe I'm going to use this card for something else in the future. See, I'm going to uh, back to the script. So I'm going to start off by creating a welding script. So we first want to uh, be able to redirect to our seat. So I assume some of you have no idea about scripting. So I'm going to explain step by step what I'm doing. So first of all, I'm starting off by creating a variable called seat. And to variable, you can assign a value or an object to it. So what I'm doing now is I am 
going to create a variable that I call the seat and it's going to refer to the seat here, the vehicle seat. We also uh, refer to cart, which is going to be the seat, because now we can refer to the seat. The parent, not parent. We're going to also refer to the chassis for good measure. So the chassis is going to be, uh, it could be seat.parent or it could be cart.chassis, both works. And then we're going to define the wheels as cart.wheels. Okay, so these defin definitions are just for convenience to make it a bit more clear what I'm doing as well and going to look a bit nicer in general. So now what I want to do is I want to create a function and the function is a piece of code that you can execute that you can call to execute so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the function weld and I'm going to give it a parameter as well so this is called a parameter this is going to be a new variable in a way just like C the card but I can set I can determine what this variable is going to be by for example writing weld cart so let's continue with the script so I want all parts to be connected to the seat itself so what I want to do is I want to be able to run through every part and every model inside the my cart model and I want to um, make it stuck basically to the vehicle seat, make it fixed to it. So I am going to start off with, don't worry, uh, don't freak out if you don't know what this is, I'm going to explain the way that you need. Okay, so what I have done he done here is I've created a what's called a for loop. So I am going to take the model here, and actually, it has to be uh, your children because reasons. And basically, what I want to do is I want to take the my card model. And I want to select everything that's inside the car, my car model, which is in this case to the chassis and the wheels model. So for each of these models, I want to check. First of all, this is going to be, uh, you'll see later why I'm going to do this. I first want to check if the item I've selected, and now I can refer to each of these because I can refer to both of these um, models by item, which I wrote here. So if item is A, which is, uh, let me think, this is called a function, this is a built-in function, which you can use from wrongs. So you just need some scripting experience to know these. I've only stopped started to use this recently so if the item is a model then what I want to do is I want to call the world function again and I want the world function to run through everything that's inside the item which is a model so for example it's going to take the chassis and it's going to run through every part in the chassis or rather everything that is in the chassis which could also include uh, anything else like a value or a uh, script so and we can also declare so if the item is a base part and the base part is basically everything that is a 
parts. So it includes the vehicle seat, it includes the parts themselves, and it includes wedges, and also I believe includes uh, mesh parts and corner wedges. So this is a very convenient way of saying. Wait, right, I need to. Sorry, I need to write these. Uh, this is one word in this program language because I also work sometimes uh, program in other languages, so it may get a little bit confusing at times for me. Anyway, so so for each single part, I first want to check because I don't want to fix every part to the seat. So first of all, I don't have to fix the seat to itself. So if item dot name isn't vehicle seat vehicle seat then we're going to basically uh, run through this and otherwise if the item it does happen to be called vehicle seat then it's going to ignore the vehicle seat And we don't only want to ignore the vehicle seat, but we also want to ignore... We don't want to ignore the servos, they're going to be fixed to the vehicle seat. We do want to ignore these ones. And these ones. So I could go on and uh, write item.name doesn't equal fl and doesn't equal... F5 and I have to do this eight times or I can make a little shortcut for myself because we are uh, this is assuming this this will work in my case but this technically means you can't have any other parts with just two uh, characters or what I can do actually I think this is a little bit better I'm going to call these wheel FL because what I am about to do is I am going to ignore every part that starts with wheel. So if item or item dot name isn't wheel, well obviously this is in itself is not going to work. But what if I only take the first four characters first five characters sorry of the item name. So I'm going to use another uh, built in functionality from uh, in Roblox Studio. Which is string dot sub item name one five. So it's going to take the first. What this does is it's going to take the first five characters from uh, wheel rr. So it's going to take wheel and it's going to match wheel here. And I am going to do the same thing for servo. Which, is al which also happens to be five characters, so I can leave it like this. And all other parts are going to be connected. Wait, the servo is a sorry. The servo is the part that acts. Other parts that have to be connected to the uh, vehicle seat. So I need to exclude the axle parts as well, or what I've called the axle parts. So we're going to carry on so what do we want to do with the rest of the parts i want to insert a weld not to confuse with this uh note that it has a, it starts with a small letter and the function starts with a capital letter which are being distinguished in uh pretty much in most programming languages i'm pretty sure in the programming languages that no uh capital letters do matter most of the time so I want to insert a new weld, which you can do by typing instance.new and then weld. And I want the weld to be inside the seat. And then weld dot part zero, it's going to be the seat and weld dot Part one is 
going to be our item, which should be one of these parts. And then we want to uh, T frame our welds. So this is a part that I don't know by head anymore. So I'm going to have to, uh, I may have to look something up in a moment. So let me think for a second. So I'm pretty sure it is C, uh, dot C frame times seats.c frame inverse this is really tricky I still need to understand this properly myself frame inverse this is probably going to go wrong badly so I may have to insert a free model just to basically uh, look up how this is supposed to be done again item let's first complete the script and then we'll see what happens uh, this is probably going to go wrong at first but we shall see uh, let me see so what else do we have to do we have to uh, I think we're done actually yes I think we're done so if I'm going to play this it's probably going to go badly interesting So the wheels and the, hold up, so the wheels, wait, hold up, aren't those parts supposed to be excluded? Yes, they are. Okay, let me check something here. Okay, cool. I mean... This is not quite the intended effect. So why are the wheels suddenly, suddenly locked with... Which of course we could say unanchored. Uh, watch this. Okay, watch this. Uh, <sighs> Parts just died. Uh, this one moved. Not where they were. A... Okay, this is not going well at all. So it's just anchored. Okay. So some parts. Okay, weird. Some parts uh, have done the right. Have been fixed to the. Don't understand why the wheels are apparently attached to the. Are they? Are they attached to the vehicle seat? Isn't supposed. To. Okay, that didn't work. The vehicle seat isn't supposed to be able. To. Axle wait, 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 wait. This isn't. This is not supposed to. Be. Oh, because I didn't. I wrote all, and I should have written and. Okay, I'm stupid. I am stupid, I am stupid. This looks better. Uh, let's manually unanchor everything as well. Once we're done, so I'm going to write a second function. Uh, action. Mm, let's, uh, let, yeah, let's make this separate thing. Unanchor so, all. This is going to do same. This is going to be a very similar function as w the weld one, except that the. So again, I'm going to do for the empty thing, which is a number. If you want to count uh, through all the through all the items within the model or list. This so uh, for. Blank, comma, item in pairs, model, get children, do, I, so this is supposed to be called, uh, I want to call this model, 
Let me actually copy and paste this quickly. And I want to remove this here. Uh, change this to unanchor all. So if it's a base part, then item dot anchored equals false. And then I want to call this function here. And then it's this looks <laughs> that's some nice flashiness. So why do these wedge parts not want to be attached properly unlike the rest of the parts? Let me try something. Uh, this is makes me stupid. Ooh, this looks weird. Yeah, this looks worse. Uh, okay, sorry. I, I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to have to uh, go to three models, see how it was done. Because this is some um, T frame math stuff that I'm not at all pro at. This one's done a bit differently. Let's just join this and then apply it to my script. I know this is dumb, this is stupid, but uh, unfortunately I forgot how to do this. So let's see, V I assume is, okay, V is the it, wait, uh, item and I want to be connected to the seat and what did I, uh, that's an interesting notation. I don't use personally, but okay. Uh, part zero is the seat or the previous part in that script's case because some people like to script a little bit differently. So I'm going to join this. Uh, in this case, you it, the capital letter doesn't matter, but I like to do it how uh, Roblox has defined or how it says in the, what says in the Roblox documentation. In the Roblox documentation, they capitalize inverse, so I'm going to do the same. Now our card works. Now it's anchored together, and uh, I think if I am going to create a quick ramp, then I should be able to make this card go off a ramp. So I'm going to put this cart on this beautiful ramp. Hit play and it should. There we go. And it rolls as it should. So let's remove this ramp then. And thank you, you won't be necessary anymore. And then I am going to start script. Do some more scripting. Actually, I'm going to uh, change the purpose of this script. I'm going to write out some other stuff in here as well. So I'm going to call this uh, chassis script. So this thing starts with, uh, let's add a comment. So this is the welding. the cart this can go and then I want to carry on uh, let me think I want to create a user interface a GUI so I'm going to insert a screen GUI quickly I'm going to leave it empty for now. I'm actually going to put it inside the script. So it's going to be called seat. I'm going to rename it to seat GUI. And then because the seat GUI is going to contain a local script. 
and the local script is going to be empty for now but what I want this local script to do is I want the local script to take care of uh, controlling the card and yeah basically making the card able to move because, it might, I've, because if you want to make uh, controls for something uh, I highly recommend using a local script because that's more reliable and if you use a server yeah because from my experience when working on from Remix, it's just more reliable to use a local script for uh, handling play input and also you have to use a local script if you want to handle uh, play input because you can also use the input that's been given to the vehicle seat here but that's uh, I wouldn't do that I would do it like this so uh, con Roll. This is going to take care of the controlling of the car, and I want. I'm going to also insert an object value quickly. Object value is going to be uh, linked to the vehicle seat because this will be used to refer to the vehicle seat. Then I want uh, the following to happen. I want when the player sits in the seat that the seat UI is going to appear for the player. That the GUI is going to not be in starter GUI but in the player GUI which you can't see right now. Uh, I'll actually show you quickly what I mean with that. So I want the GUI, why is this thing moving? I don't know. Uh, so I want the screen GUI to move to the player GUI, which you can find here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give this function uh, as another function that uh, I'm going to call the function layer connect. So this function is going to be executed when a player sits in the cart. So I know what happens when I'm going to show you very quickly again. So if if your player sits in the cart, then the cart will create a an extra part alongside all these beautiful world parts and the new world part is going to be called seed world and we will be able to use the seed world to refer to our player so uh, we also need to keep in mind that uh, the other worlds will be inserted as well so First of all, so when the player connects, uh, we'll be able to use the. We'll, we'll be able to refer to refer to the world. Actually, let's write that first. Uh, the the um, seat detection. So, if the seat uh, gets a new child, and that means if it gets a, if uh, something is added uh, under the seat, which would be uh, the seat world, but it's. Well, it would also be the other worlds that's being added, so we're going to have to dis distinguish between those in a moment. Connect. So if a child's being added, then connect, aka execute this function here. Move those brackets. Then we want to make sure that the world we have is actually the seed worlds. So if um, the well, the part's name or the new child's name in question isn't seat well, then we can ignore. Then we can uh, go here, and this, and then uh, this function will end. Nothing else will happen. So if we have the seat well, then we want uh, character equals well the part. One, part one. This is to 
be a local variable. Well, the part one dot parent. So what's that going to do is that's going to refer to the because if you look what happens if I go ahead and sit into the cart is that the seat well should reference to be able to reference to the humanoid root part which is part of my character so I uh, so this bit here refers to uh, the humanoid root part and this refers to its parent which should be uh, the model of my character so then what I want to do is I want to refer to my uh, player so what I'm going to do is I am going to call player and the player is going to be uh, game.players find first child uh, this is to prevent an error because it could happen that uh, a character, something with a humanoid root part sits is going to sit in the on the seat and and that character doesn't have a uh, isn't an actual player so we won't be able to detect the player so we want so the player name is the same as the character name so we can find the player by the character name and we want just in case so if the player doesn't exist or so if the player it does exist so it so it's not the case that it doesn't exist so if player is not nil then we want to clone the our uh, seat GUI so seat GUI clone and the clone will be moved to player dot player GUI. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to go to play. I'm going to sit in the car and we're going to check the play and it has the beautiful seat UI now and as you may also notice here it prints hello world because that's what's in this control script here control script because this script will only work once it's in the player so this script is going to execute once it's in the player So let's first again determine some variables. So the UI is script the parents. Uh, the seat will be uh, UI dot seat, and the seat, if you remember, is going to uh, refer to the vehicle seat. And so we're going to make sure to check if uh, actually let's um, this. Uh, actually, I'm not going to create a function, so let's do it this way. So, if seat doesn't exist, then uh, let's not do anything anymore. Actually, we're going to, I think we're going to assume that the seat exists because it's, that the card isn't going to disappear once, uh, once we have our uh, script. It's uh, our GUI inserted into the player, so we can leave this out. We don't have to check if the seat still exists because we're going to assume in this case that the seat still exists. I'm going to write an in function, which is the function we're going to call straight away. By the way, you're allowed to write stuff uh, outside the function as well, but uh, everything that you write outside the function is going to be executed immediately. Uh, it's just that I like to write it like this because my study encourages me to write like this because I'm doing uh, I study computer science right now and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry I lost for words. Um, okay, let's just carry on. Uh, this is just 
this looks cleaner. This is just prettier to look at for other programmers if you work in a group and you have other people looking at your code as well. You want your code to basically look really good. You want it to look attractive. And you want your colleagues to look at the code and go like, oh yeah, that's pretty nice code. So that's why I'm going to write the code like this. Because I want to impress my uh, potential colleagues who may look at this code at some point. Okay, so we're going to uh, so the init. I think it's going to be empty for now. This is stuff we want to do immediately once we uh, insert script. Actually, I'm not sure if we're going to need this. And I'm going to add an update script, which is going to uh, fire. It's going to execute uh, every frame. So what I'm going to do is I am going to call a Roblox service, which is called the run service. This game get service run service, and this gives us ac this gives us access to a function that I'm going to use to check uh, if the game has gone to a new frame so usually if you, ha if you have a decent PC then the game is going to run at 60 frames per second so every so 60 times per second it's going to execute this function here so what I'm going to do is I am going to actually let me write this in the init function so while now let's do it here <laughs> so while run servers dot uh, what's it called again it should be here render stepped wait do this is a little uh, short notation trick so what this does is it's going to execute all the code that's in here every single time actually <laughs> never mind I want there's a I'm going to put this piece of code in here because there's a reason for that because I want to be able to stop this uh, loop uh, in a certain scenario, which we we'll probably don't have to cover, but this is just long-term thinking right here. So, what do we want to do within the script? We want to be able to make the card move, and to want to make the card roll. Uh, so, how are we going to uh, determine when a card is supposed to move and? forward or backwards and when a card's supposed to turn. So what I am going to do is I'm going to create a new variable which isn't going to refer to any existing part but I'm just going to make up my own uh, value here. So this is a number value. And this is going to be another number value. So if this is this can be zero, minus one or one. If it's one then it's going to move forward. If it's zero then it's going to do nothing. And if it's minus one it's going to either break or reverse. So I'm going to keep zero and steer. If it's minus one then it's going to turn left. If it's zero it's not going to turn. We also go the front wheels are going to be straight. And if steer equals one, then it's going to steer to the right. So, what I am going to do now is I am going to, first of all, check uh, refer to update. Let's do that first. So, we're going to write our loop in here. I also want to refer to um, the wheels in advance. So uh, to the motor specifically and uh, servos so we can make the car turn so motor font right let's make it look a little bit clean I'm going to throw this up below here just because I feel like it 
So the motor is going to make the cart move forward, so the motor should be within the axle, so we are going to have to refer to seat.parent.parent, which is going to be mycart.wheels.axle.axlefr.motor. And I want to also be able to refer to mm, front left. Rear right, also do the same here, and rear left. And we want to also be able to refer, uh, actually we only need the front ones for this, we don't care about the rear. Uh, this is going to be for the turning of the car. So, so I'm going to call it Servo FR, and that is going to be called Servo FL. So I'm going to have to refer to uh, servo fr dot servo, and I am going to do the same here. And I'm going to quickly grab some water because I need to drink something because I've, otherwise my voice is going to go. So I'll see you in one minute. Alright, I'm back. Uh, by the way, we had some beautiful uh, sim racing drama last weekend in uh, Formula E with Daniel App, didn't we? <sighs> that was fun. Good one. Having somewhere else to have for you, which is pretty much the biggest fraud you can do commit in uh, sim racing. <laughs> So that's cool. So we've referred to the motor and the servo. So what's going to happen? I'm going to show you right now. Is I want to be able to make the card. Move. So I'm going to select the four axle parts. I'm going to select motors. And I'm going to make Cart move. So angular velocity is going to be 10. And then the cart should start moving. I hope they're not going to try to turn in uh, contradictory directions. I see this hinge is trying to do something. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's take it slow. Uh, well, motor, so if I make it to minus 10, then the car should be okay. It doesn't work. Cool. Why don't you want to move? The power. Okay, cool. Let's make this uh, a lot more. You should have infinite ex max torque. Uh, you should have infinite power. Come on. No? Okay, cool. I guess it's uh, yeah, uh, I guess it's not working. If I remove these, oh yeah, they're not moving. They are not going anywhere because one part, this the actual parts are supposed to be fixed. The rest are supposed to be able to move. No, you can't. Oh dear, oh dear, well, these parts have certainly moved. It should be food to roll, fuck. Uh, 
Why don't you want to roll? Um. Hey, there we go. Okay, so left ones have to be minus thousands and the others have to be plus thousands in order to make these move. Uh, so first I'm going to specify when this thing should move. So I want the motor fr dot, let me check. I want a motor, uh, let me make all the motor Actually, let's write that those in here as well. Let's put those in the. Let's do this first. Dot uh, motor max torque was one thousand. I want to do this for all four of them. F L rear right and rear left. So, they are at least going to be able to move. Then, I want to make the... Okay, be able to modify the angular velocity. So, the left ones have to be minus... I'm going to do minus 50. I think that will do. Minus 50, 50... 50 and do all of that. Uh, let's do this a bit. Thro uh, throttle. Throttle. What time? Throttle. There we go. Cool. So that means if throttle is one, that. Uh, these are going to obviously move But how do we change this uh, value to one so I could either do this manually by just suddenly declaring that throttle or all of a sudden is one so basically that means The cards always going to move forwards It's a bit low power Give it more talk first of all, let's see if that makes a difference. I mean to be fair the card's probably pretty heavy as well. Let's change the weight of the chassis. Let's bring the weight down. Tip one. The card should be lighter now, so it should have a much easier time moving. Forward, yes, it does slightly, but uh, let's do this 500. Now it's going to be able to roll forward on its own, uh, still struggling. Don't need to control script 1000. Thousand, one thousand, one thousand. I think I need to remove the other things, the other sides, because they are not doing any favor right now. The axles. Let's remove the hinges. I keep saying hinges, uh, it should be pronounced hinges, I'm pretty sure. Remove those. And the cards will have a not easier time moving on their own. Let's make the wheels, let's make everything in here lighter. Let's make this uh, 0.1 density and let's up the friction to 1 as well while we're at it. Cool. Really cool. Uh, now it doesn't move. 
Because apparently uh, the carts are somehow heavier. Make this one, and I actually think zero zero one. No, that's not one zero. Okay, cool. Uh, make this. It's going well. Why aren't you moving, you bastards? What's this? I don't make. I don't get this logic. If the cart's lighter, shouldn't it be easier for them to move? Or oh, no? Apparently not. Because logic doesn't exist. Oh yeah, it doesn't move anymore. Let's undo everything I just did. Wait. Just move, okay? Thanks. Okay, I'm going to uh, try to change this again. Does this work? Yet. It just doesn't bother to... Uh, or does it for some reason... Wait, does it just... Stop? Okay, cool. For some reason it decides to... Uh... Oh, Wes, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. Uh, of course it doesn't work, because... If you're going to... Um, the thing is going to move by itself. You're going to have to sit in the thing first before it can move. Wow, do you really think the cart's going to be able to move on its own? Of course it doesn't. Wow. So clever, yeah. I'm going to sit, and now it should be able to roll on its own. Oh, Wheels is not a valid member of Play GUI. Yay, I messed up something, very cool. Seat. Wait, seat of value, of course. Where is the stream still going? Should be. The YouTube is uh, giving me a... Uh, scaring me a little bit. Anyway, now we know the card works. I want to... Uh, make controls for this card so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another function because why not at this point I'm going to remove this here we don't need this I'm going to call this uh, get input in put okay but notice uh, let me actually get uh, the input service works quickly. Okay, user input service, Roblox developer heart. Okay, so let's get the... I'm going to put this on the screen quickly. I'm going to read from this here quickly, as you can see. Not going to show the entire thing. Uh, actually, I will. Never mind. So, I want to use a particular function, an event. And that event is going to be called input change. We're going to need this here to do our bidding so input changed so now we're going to go back to studio and we are going to uh, call this function whenever so an input changes and I don't want this uh, insert bull crap so I first need to uh, refer to the input service by doing pretty much the same as I did with the 
run service so I need to go to game get service and then in user input service then I go running Okay, good. Uh, let's carry on. So, the input has a second uh, parameter which we won't need, so I'm going to leave it blank by writing an underscore. So... Uh, we want to first check if the input... Uh, let me, uh, I need to look it up again, uh, inputs, input object, let me check, uh, okay, so if, Input so uh, user input type equals user input uh, enum dot user input type dot that's not the one. Input user inputs. Okay, wait. Uh, enum. I need to check what's called again. So enum user input type. No, it's not input type. Is it input state? Dot. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. So you put input state equals begin. So if, uh, for example, you start pressing a key, then it's going to detect this. So if input dot key code equals enum dot user in key code actually dot w. We need to write an if statement here as well. So if W then throttle is going to be one. Else, if so, if it's going to be something else, then we want if it's going to be A. I'm going to do just a uh, W A S D controls. I uh, could also do arrows, but I uh, don't think I'm going to do that in this video. Okay, inputs. Okay, uh, so if we want to stay to the right, then steer is going to be. No, to the left is minus one. Otherwise, we are going to uh, steer to the uh, right, and let's actually put this below. This bit, so throttle is going to be minus one. If in question, this should be D, by the way, and this should be S. There we go. Then else, if input dot user input state. So if we uh, are releasing a key instead, input state dot end. Then. Uh, let me think for a second. I'm going to separate this. We are going to um, use if input dot key code plus enum dot key code dot uh, 
What's this app? Uh, this is Roblox Studio. Uh, it may look a bit different because the, I'm using dark theme and because I've got a custom font. I downloaded the font and I uh, changed the Roblox Studio settings so I have a different font and everything. So it may look a bit unfamiliar to you. Uh, I like using dark theme because it's generally pretty uh, uh, for my eyes to look at for a long of time and pretty much if you're a programmer then Come on, you have to use dark theme, or you're not a real programmer. It's an obligation. If you are a programmer, you have to use dark theme with any uh, app you use, any um, text editor you use, where you have to program in. It is an absolute requirement to. Uh, that so this is not the optimal way to um, write this bit here by the way and this was actually what I first had in uh, Formula Roblox which I later changed else if this should be else if steer if zero so if we release the A key or the D key then uh, it's going to not see it anymore and if we release the W or the S key then we are not going to be steering anymore. Uh, w or S we're not going to be throttling anymore uh, and otherwise we are not going to be steering anymore. So we have so now we should be able to change the throttle I think we should be done now with this bit so if I am going to test I should be able to use my W and S keys to move the cards forwards and backwards so let's test Doesn't work because why isn't it working Errors. Nope. It's not working. Why? It's not the, because it's not changing anything. Throttle should become one. Ah, uh, and. Okay, let's actually make sure that this thing is being called. So if I do a cheeky uh, print thing here. If I print print, then it should print if I press a key which it doesn't detect, so I did something wrong. So why isn't this? doing its job what if I throw it here instead and input servers dot input changed that should do the trick right all the specifically have to be uh, input began and input ended so I believe I did that actually. Uh, so I'm going to make these two. So input began, I believe, and input ended. So well, that means that uh, this uh, function is only going to hold if I um, start releasing. Yeah, look. So I press W now, I press S, and we can move the card forwards and backwards. There we go. And now, um, so this is fine. The card moves, which is fine in itself as well. Then we want to be able to finally turn our card as well. 
So I actually need to quickly test it out myself which values uh, the card needs to have, uh, all the um, constraints need to have. So I'm going to select the front servos and I want to uh, make it have a different target angle. Uh, 20. Oh, it took here. I don't want to touch that one. Uh, front left. So front left and front right. Let's make that. Um, target angle 20. Is this collidable? No. Why isn't it? Uh, why is it refusing to uh, turn? Okay, FR. Let's check this quickly. FL. Uh, angular speed. Need to change that. Max torque 1000. Hey, look at that. Make it two, by the way. Uh, I'm going to make this 100,000. And yeah, that's what we need to do. So, I am going to add some beautiful extra code here. Motor dots. Uh, actually, I need to make a servo, not mode. Servo. Change this to servo fr. Servo fl. Servo fl. Servo rr and servo rl. And then. Oh wait, so we don't need. We don't have to touch the rear ones. Manx talk is going to be a lot. <laughs> it's not, and it's probably not called motor max talk, by the way. Uh, servo, let's check. Let's check. Um, servo max talk. It's almost the same, but it's very different. Wait, of course, I need to change these one. Not the top one, those need to stay the same. You change these ones, and I also. Wants to fr dot servo dot um, angular speed equals two. Not dot fr, but just servo fr. Servo fl is also going to be two. Let's see, that's correct, so that means this is going to be, uh, this here is going to be 2. Uh, let's, let's keep this separated, so I don't really care about the style too much. Let's remove this, we don't, we won't need this anymore. Then, servo dots, or oh, servo f r dot target angle so if our card is going to move turn so 20 is to the right so that means this is going to have to be this I want to do the same for the left one so it's going to be 20 times steer and if you remember steer is zero so if uh, we don't do anything so that means this is going to be zero. If it if steer equals one, uh, that happens when we hold the A key. Let me change that. The A key. No, sorry, the D key. I'm sorry. Uh, if we hold the D key, then steer should be one. And if we hold the A key, which means we're supposed to turn to the left, then steer is going to be minus one, and our target angle will therefore be minus twenty. So. Let's test that out again. I don't think I cast a lot of grips, but as you can see, uh, it is struggling to turn a little bit, I think, maybe. It doesn't have a lot of grip, does it? There we go. Let's make a really, let's do a, make a really quick track, uh, just for fun, so we can 
have a proper surface to drive this thing on so let's me do this very quickly I don't really care too much about the looks uh, so to make this uh, you, can't, you almost can't see it let's make this surface a little bit darker get make around this is a good color it's a good surface color let's make the base plate which is locked in itself so let's take the base plate give it give them grass color grass and I want to get rid of them Lego ish things yeah, let's put the cart on the road let's make the base plate a bit larger And let's make a really short circuit very quickly with the help of this amazing plugin that we call Archimedes 2. So let's make it turn to the right first. Let's make an S curve actually. So turn to the right, turn. See, let's make uh, let's make it a really sharp turn. Make the hairpin. Make the track come back. a short turn to left this is me improvising by the way let's make a short straight then let's make a hairpin hairpin here and let's try to complete the track. To make it not the tightest corner in the world, but let's let's make not make the corner turn too easy to take. It doesn't add up completely, but. doesn't completely add up but I do not care this looks completely fine oh wait I didn't anchor the parts down yet did I oh I did cool okay let's no I no I didn't I didn't anchor the road good job Whoa, this looks a bit messy. Anchor this. Looks pretty cool to be uh, fair. A little bit of kind of, kind of an off-road uh, with uh, all those uh, speed bumps, basically. So now we are able to drive. Maybe a bit boring. Let's speed the uh, cart up a little bit. Let's actually uh, make a new variable. Adjustable stuff. Uh, local and then top speed equals 130. Let's do that. Let's take top speed, control C. Angular velocity, stop speed. There we go. No, our car, our car doesn't like turning at high speed. By the way, not sure. It's struggling to. Uh, I think it's slightly struggling in general. I don't know why. Uh, 
I can try to uh, non collide love parts that are close to uh, wheels and such. I think that should be better for the car. Not quite, but at least we've got a moving cart, sort of. That more or less is working, not perfectly, as it's swerving on its own a little bit. Doesn't like the grass as well. Okay, so cool, we've got a moving vehicle at least. Um, the handling isn't exactly the best, so we're going to improve on that later on. Um, also, I am going to try to uh, add suspension to this cart as well. It's a form of suspension. And I am going to uh, try to uh, create a custom... Well, actually, let's do a speed indicator very quickly. So, let me take this... But here, the GUI. Let's make the speed indicator very quickly. Uh, okay. Text label. Cool. Let's make a, a white with a black edge. Black outline. Make five. Uh, let's make it a little bit transparent. So let's uh, change the font as well. I'm fine with the current size of it. Text to zero. And let's move it. Yeah. Let's actually make it really not transparent, so. I'm going to move it a little bit more down, 150 perhaps is better. There we go. Speed o meter. There we go. Okay, and I can implement this straight away as well. We're going to call this speed o meter. Local speed equals. Okay, our ex gamer is asking, where did you learn how to script or just trying different things? So that's a good question. So I started scripting my jobs uh, when I was younger, when I was like uh, 12 year old, 13 years old. Then I, somewhere around that time, I started looking at uh, just scripts for fun and tried to figure them out because I was somewhat interested in that already. And yeah, slowly uh, started to know how it works. I watched a few tutorials on YouTube here and there, and I started to figure out, in a way, how the basics of scripting work. Which is, and my scripting ability back in the day was nowhere, nowhere near as good as it is now. And a couple of years later, I'm now uh, studying computer science, where I also learn further learn to program I've also uh, learned on my own by watching some YouTube videos how to uh, program websites partially on the basic level which also has helped me develop uh, get better at scripting and what also helps to get better scripting is just challenge yourself uh, just say you want to kind of judge for yourself uh, what's the challenge for you it's it shouldn't be too difficult for you to do but it should be a challenge for example uh, I want to make a ball that rolls in itself that makes a circle out of itself or I want to make a uh, GUI uh, where you can click a button you want to set challenges for yourself in a way, you just want to uh, mess around, try to set targets for yourself. Uh, mostly if you set the targets for yourself, you will end up uh, doing research. You have to look things up on Google or YouTube or you can use uh, uh, Rogue's documentation. 
aka developer.roblox.com where you can find a lot of stuff as well. So yeah, if you want to start learning how to script then uh, I would say practice, mess around, uh, look up some tutorials here and there and um, you should be able to get started. Okay back to the script so I want back to this here so I created a speed variable here and what I want to do with this I want to make the speed variable equal to the current speed of the card so I can do that by selecting the speed getting the velocity and then dot magnitude uh, it's a bit hard to explain you need to understand have decent understanding of scripting you know to be able to understand this uh, I'm going to shortly explain it in a way so velocity is kind of like position it's the direction that velocity is the direction where the seat is heading so it's uh, this here and what magnitude does is I'm not sure uh, let me think how it I was called again. Uh, the the, the Pythag Pythagoras uh, theorem, I believe. So the a squared plus b squared equals c squared uh, principle, and then it applies it to x, y, and z. And then, uh, long story short, it's going to give you the speed of at which the seat is going in studs per second, which is actually pretty close to uh, kilometers an hour. In terms of uh, speed units. So of course speed, now we need to uh, update our speedometer here and after this I think I'm going to end the stream for today and I'm going to carry on with this uh, later this week probably. Uh, I need to see this, I need to see uh, when I'm going to continue with this, maybe later this week. I think uh, I may do um, Wednesday evening or I think either Wednesday evening or Friday evening I think it's good to have a stream in the weekends where more people can watch perhaps uh, but yeah probably later this week I'm going to do a part two of this this is go probably going to be a little series I'll do all right let's carry on let's finish this off uh, not CGI I'm not know what I'm typing so speedometer dot text equals speed and this is a number speed is a number but uh, what's convenient for us here is that uh, the, our programming language Lua is going to automatically convert the number into a text or a string value there's a difference there uh, so that's something Lua does for us the programming language uh, other pro other programming languages require you to uh, specify convert this into a uh, string so it wouldn't accept, accept what I've done here so you have to do something like this but luckily for us uh, the program language here in Robux is pretty uh, it's pretty flexible see if I oh wait I forgot to uh, move the CGI back to the vehicle. Uh, it's what's inside the script. Let's do that first. New weekend is the event, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, from Rogue's event. I'm going to announce that. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Uh, close the script. Dang it. I close the script. Wow. Script line seven. See, right. can't find the parent all of a sudden. Really? Okay, cool. Uh, oh wait, this value is gone. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Okay, uh, I, I I may change that a little bit uh, soon. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. It's going to show a lot of decimals. <laughs> this looks really stupid. Okay, uh, one sec. First of all, let 
let's remove the default Roblox uh, heads up display and let's change the speed here because the speed it is a it's going to have a lot of decimals behind the dots uh, but what you have to do if you want to get rid of those decimals there's a handy function for that build a function Roblox currently provides to us and that's math.floor and what this does it's going to round whatever number you have here down to the nearest full or down to uh, the full number so 1.7 will become 1, 1.2 will become 1 Okay, uh, it's working. We've got our custom uh, speed display. Awesome. Our card isn't exactly cooperating here, by the way, but that's uh, fine. Uh, we'll sort it out later. Okay, so um, do you think it's a challenge if I start coding and developing cards on Roblox and falling off now? I would say it's doable. Uh, I think, I uh, actually, I think making cars on Roblox is pretty, it's more difficult, so it's definitely going to be a challenge, I think, to do. It's going, to, if, if you can't code right now, then I think it's going to take a while before you can make a good, uh, car works, because even I, uh, find it pretty difficult to create a car, especially because of the Roblox physics, and are pretty tricky. As you can see in this video, because it's not a simple case of, uh, okay, I'm giving the car some speed, I'm going to make a turn, and then I've got the car. No, because then there's this issue with uh, Rogue's physics that the wheels don't turn properly, or the car is weaving itself. It's very, um, yeah, it's very complex. So, uh, I would say cart is, uh, never say never though. Uh, if you try hard enough, if you spend the time uh, trying to build a car and I think uh, anyone I think if you're 14 years old then you can do it I think any age above 12 I think uh, as long as you have the dedication especially that's the most important thing probably then you should be able to uh, make something work eventually even though it m you um, may uh, struggle at first so yeah I think able to do that eventually okay so that's it for the stream I'm going to end the stream right now uh, I'm going to carry on with this late I've been streaming for two hours that's probably one of been one of the longest streams I've ever done hmm okay so I'm going to end the stream I'm going to carry on with this later on hope you enjoyed the stream and I'll see you next time <laughs>